Yes, welcome back to Dundalk. We're delighted to be joined by a very special guest uh, this evening, of course, and a very appropriate guest on, of course, the eve of the Cheltenham mm. Festival, but only a couple of days away. Conor Dwyer, Conor, you're very welcome along. Thanks, Mr. Kev. Thanks, Frank. Mm. Connor, unbelievable career, unbelievable Cheltenham record. We're going to talk a bit more about that in depth later on, but only four winners, but the two blue ribbon chases are races he won twice, two gold cups and two uh, champion hurdles. Not a bad record. No, it's a good record. <laughs> Fran took the fifth one away from me. He hasn't been teeny up about that. We, 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 we've been saved on video for later on tonight. I'm going home here. See you yeah, no, listen, brilliant, just the way it worked. Uh, plenty of seconds, plenty of thirds. Um, but to get the, the, the four winners of those races, sure, absolutely amazing. And to have Imperial Call as my first winner to win a gold cup, like, sure, you couldn't, you couldn't write it. And that was at 30 years of age as well, wasn't it? So you'd been around, with the greatest respect, for quite yeah, some time. Yeah, but yeah. it was at the time as well that we weren't having many winners in Cheltenham. No, we weren't. Um, we had a few that year, but before that it was, was sparse here and there, and it, I think the previous gold cup was done around 10 years earlier. Mm. Um, so, you know, to go over, it was... Uh, with, with, a, with a chance even or you know, riding it was, was brilliant but to have a chance in it and then to come and win was, was fantastic and Conor just going back to your earlier career your upbringing you're from Wexford you weren't from a racing family at all no mum was a uh, matron in Wexford General Hospital and dad was a, a figures man in, in a few different firms and uh, just got friendly with John Berry in, in school and used to go back to his, his house after school and ride ponies and <laughs> mess around and just got the bug for it completely and, random uh, a set of events if you yeah, like yeah, yeah Absolutely, if I hadn't met John, probably, you know, could have been all, mm. all different, but uh, just got the bug for it, and mum and dad got me a pony in at some stage, and started riding out for local trainers, Jim Rossiter and uh, Liam Codd, Lord of Mercy on him, and uh, a few bits and pieces like mm. that, so that's where it started. And the apprentice school was only getting going then, that's when you made a move up there? Yeah, I went up there, I think it probably was its, maybe its fourth or, or fifth year, and went up there for the, for the year, and was put out to uh, Frank Oaks. Um, at the time, and uh, I signed on with him then when I finished in the in the apprentice school and started there. And where was Frank Oaks training at the time on the car? He was in Christy Roach's ah. yard. Uh, Tom Connolly owned it, and he rented it from Tom. And uh, that's 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 where we started. Yeah, so. Uh, Many moons ago, now. and did you have a couple of rides on the flat? <laughs> I did, uh, not a, not a lot. I was I was too heavy, probably. And at the time, the apprentice school was it was brilliant, but there wasn't much guidance, I suppose. And maybe I, I probably should have taken out an amateur license, it, uh, the fact of my weight. But I got a few rides in the flat. Frank had a more jumpers than flat horse, mm. but he had a couple of uh, flat ones and uh, got a few rides. But I went jumping pretty pretty quick. And how long did you spend with Frank? I was with Frank probably for I'd say five years. Um, we, he moved then up to uh, Taft's yard in Straffan. Okay. Where um, Boots Madden is now? Yeah, yeah, no, that's Toss Taft. Oh, sorry, yeah, Taft. Sorry, yeah, in, yeah, sorry, in, in, in So I, I went up there with him late, late on, and uh, then I, I, I went uh, to Francis Floods after that. And oh, when did you ride your first winner? I rode the first winner um, for Frank in a, a claiming uh, bumper in Limerick. Christmas, uh, I think it was 85 or 6. <laughs> <laughs> Around that. We're already charged back then, Frank, weren't we? <laughs> exactly. And the old Limerick, of course, uh, people see the new Limerick, but the old Limerick in the middle of the city and uh, quite a sharp track. And uh, Christmas time, obviously, Clash of Leopards, and your winner probably went under the radar a bit. It did now, but I suppose at the time, too, again, the media wasn't, wasn't big mm. or, you know, um, it was just great to get a winner and get off the mark and, and get going. Um, as you said, Limerick had, had a good bit of look around it over the years, but uh, she was always bottom of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you spent five years with Frank. Did you ride many winners in after your first winner? Was it a slow progression, or did did you take off quite quickly? No, it was slow enough, really. But uh, everything was kind of it was different back then too. Do you know? Um, even if you won on a horse, a, a, a professional got back on a type of thing. That, it's not like today when a claimer gets on one, you know, mm. they leave him on, or mm. they use claimers a lot more these days. But back then, you were lucky just to, to get a ride and get a winner, and that done you for a little while, keep you keep your back down. Which is no harm as well, because now a lot it's of them want it to happen too, too quick, quickly, and absolutely. they're not ready for it, are no. they? Like a lot of lads go through the claim there before they're 19, or, you mm. know, and it's great when, when they have the claim, but then when they have the claim, 
you've no job or you've no uh, outside rides. You and know, and no, exper no experience to go with yeah, it either. You're, in, you're, into the big, you're into the big leagues without that back background of experience, if you like. You yeah, know, if you, yeah. do, you go through a claim in 18 months, it leaves you with a lot of a void to fill unless you're really in the top... 2% uh, it might come through every now and again to make that kind of impact definitely like a lot of lads could ride say maybe 15 or 20 winners on the flat then go jumping and maybe 15 or 20 over hurdles mm. no chase experience all of a sudden your claim is nearly gone and as you say you've no no, no grounding mm. like so it's you know the old way was it was a good way but um, look like everything has changed yeah exactly so you spent five years with Frank Hawks then you moved to <laughs> Francis Flood yeah how did that come about eh uh, I was back down in Wexford actually at the time, um, down in, in a small yard in, in beside Page Berries down in, in Duncormac and Wexford. Uh, Peter O'Leary was his name. I'm sure, look, I was kind of, I suppose, uh, enjoying being back home really. And Mother was cooking. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Free rent. <laughs> but I remember uh, Page Berry uh, met him one, one evening and he said to me, Would you call up to the house tomorrow? And I said, Yeah, grand. So, uh, Called up to the house on here and Pat said, Look, he said, it's it's simple. He said, It's either David Nicholson's or Francis Floods. He said, You're not <laughs> staying down here. He said, You're wasting your, you're wasting your, your career. And how, how right he was. <clears throat> so, thank, thankful to him, obviously, because uh, I said, Look, again, I didn't want to go to England at the time. And I just said, Look, Francis Floods. And in fairness, he picked up the phone there and then, rang Francis. He said, I'll, mm. I'll have a lad for you on uh, Monday. And, so and I went up to torture your father. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how Frank was stable jockey. He at was, the time. he was. And it was one of the biggest jumping yards in the country. Yeah, it was. It was flying at the time. And uh, in fairness to Francis, he was, he was good, he was loyal, and you know, he'd give you a chance. And it was a great yard to mm. be in. It was, a, it, was a, it was a great decision. A lot of good horsemen there, of course. Obviously, you mentioned my dad and that. But Francis himself was a top amateur rider back in the day. Great experience of the game himself. Yeah, yeah. John Queeley was there. Morris Field, and as you said, really good, mm. good, solid, um, experienced riders, and it was great, great place to be. Yeah. And some of the top horses back in those days, Bob's Line, he'd have been there at the time, obviously. Yeah, I rode him actually up the Curro one day. I think one of his reappearance runs one year, and uh, uh, he was probably little after his better days, all right. But he, yeah, he was still there. And uh, is that a hard races. race at the Curro or no, a flat, a flat, flat race? Flat race, yeah, yeah. flat yeah. race. Um, yeah. Just a, a blowout, like mm. starting. You season. obviously rode over hurdles at the Curro, did you? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah for Jim Kavanagh. Yeah. Actually, I remember. Yeah, I finished third on something. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I remember riding there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and what other uh, good horses <laughs> there? Uh, just refresh the memory. We're at Francis Floods at the time. God. Uh, Redundant no. Pal, was he one of France? No, oh, Paddy no, Mullins. Paddy yeah, of course. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mm. It was a really nice horse. He probably didn't hit the heights. A uh, horse uh, called Never Be Great. Um, he was uh, second in a Galway plate. I was second in a Galway plate on him. Um, smashing horse. But uh, a lot of good, decent horse now. Um, Francis, in fairness to him, uh, like geez, he was he, he was a patient man with, with a lot mm. of them too, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, great, great, great yard. To be and obviously a great grounding for you as well, because now you're in a bigger yard, coming from a relatively small yard, and a, a higher quality of horse too. And you know, you're talking about the likes of Frank Berry being stable jockey, be bright bunch of lads in there as well so for you as a young rider all you're going to do is learn from riding work and schooling with those top jockeys and also riding better horses out in the morning absolutely you know and as, as we were saying earlier <coughs> about riding a bumper winner for Frank Oates as you said under the radar whereas if you rode a winner for Francis Flood it was noticed mm. you know so like that it was it was a lot easier to get going from the likes of a, a big yard than, than a small yard obviously and when did things start to get going for you when you got in the run um, it, it was late enough, really. I was claiming um, a champion claimer, but with about, I think, 15 winners at the time, do you know, which again, now you'll want mm. 50 like that, <laughs> yeah. or, or more, maybe, you know, it's amazing. But uh, mm. again, th th that was a great boost, but things still, you know, you still just had your few rides, mm. or, you know, um, your dad was a great help, obviously, he got me a lot of rides, and uh, um, I suppose it was like late twenties, like it was. It was nearly, you know. I rode a lot of um, chase winners for Paddy Mullins. Tony had given up riding over fences and uh, got a good few rides for 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 that for Mr. Mullins, uh, the Gooser. Um, I rode a lot of winners for over fences. Great, great um, uh, boost that was. So I was kind of freelancing then, and um, you know, just things fell right, like jobs fell right. Uh, at the time, not even jobs, but just rides, you know, and you were able to go around and, and pick horses that 
uh, you could stay on type of thing and it was yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know things just fell right and obviously getting that contact then and starting to write a lot for Paddy Mullins as well that got other people to sit up and take notice of you too because obviously Paddy in his heyday of course you know lads riding for him it opened up doors to other yards oh it was fantastic um, I think I got the breakthrough by riding Redonda Pal the winner at the Ladbrook mm. um, and again he was I'd say third or fourth choice at the time he was top weight he'd won it the previous year with Peter Kavanagh and uh, all the lads, Tony, Peter, they all wrote something else in it, and I just got a, a sit on him. He won it, and uh, kind of kicked off from there, really. And riding for Paddy Mullins over fences, just stories I hear over the years that didn't really see a fence before <laughs> they went to the track. <laughs> yeah, well, and he was through his house, there was no school in the morning. <laughs> but in fairness, <clears throat> they, were, they were very good. Uh, Redundant Pal was the one I wasn't looking forward to when he went chasing. Um, he wasn't the best horse to jump a hurdle even. <laughs> and uh, I remember standing in the parade ring in Navin and uh, the, the lads at Owen were there and Paddy was standing there as usual, very quiet, didn't say a whole lot. And I just happened to say, I said, how does he jump a fence? And he just looked at me and he said, mm, sure, didn't he jump a hurdle well? And I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of the most exciting beginner chases I ever rode in. He was absolutely fantastic. Was one it? of the best slippers I ever sat on. Yeah. yeah. And most of them were, for some reason, as you say, he didn't school them a lot, mm. but... God, they could jump. And you're competing in the year, of course, say, uh, obviously when my dad retired, Tommy Carmody retired, Charlie Swan came into the scene, he became very dominant, but uh, you obviously picked up a nice spare off from Imperial Call when the opportunity came. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, of course, a life of a lord, I think, for Aidan, he, he, he had to ride in the, in the Hennessy, and uh, again, you know, I put in the word for me in, in with Fergie, and uh, mm. that was the first time I got to sit in him, and uh, he was a he was a he was a he was a, a simple horse to ride, and Fergie was a, a simple man to ride for. He, he kept it simple. He was the up and coming horse at this point in time. He was. Uh, Jerry only used to ride him a bit, uh, and um, he was an novice at the time uh, and coming up. But uh, he was he, he was um, I don't know. I suppose he was he was one of the better novices at the time, really. You know, like even there he has Master Holtz and Monsieur Curé off it. Like he was he wasn't a slow horse either. Mm. And obviously Master Oates was the reigning Gold Cup uh, winner from the year before, wasn't he? Going into that he was, race. yeah, he was that year. Um, he, uh, he probably wasn't, again, the fastest horse in the world, but, you know, it doesn't matter to, to win a Gold Cup. Um, you, 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 you have to be good. And Conor, this is an era too. Jodami was a multiple winner of this race, and it used to be farmed by the English horse over the years. For To can pick up a ride in an Irish horse like this and for, to win a race like this... A huge result at the time. Absolutely. Again, it, it's you know, I, I was just a jockey riding winners here and there, and it wasn't. This was probably the first did, graded did uh, the last race. Last wrong here, no. Did, Sorry. Did he miss the last one? He did, <laughs> and it wasn't his fault. <laughs> 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 I can promise you that. <laughs> right, talk us through it again. Oh Tom. no, not even going to look. <laughs> one, two, oh, four. <laughs> <laughs> But he's basically um, gone around on the bridle. He's made very good horses look ordinary. Like Monsieur Lecure, and John Edwards' horse, cracking horse to his own right. Master Oates back in second. He's been in trouble a long, long way out. No, wait, he always had him in, in, as you saw there, in trouble. And probably even the mistake at last, I'd been popping away, you know, holding on to him, holding on him. And then just to go down to the last and expect him to just, just to come up out of my hands was, was wrong of me, you know. But look, he, he plenty in the tank and uh, went away and beat them well. And then moving on to the Gold Cup, what did you think? One man, I think, was the red hot favourite for that year's uh, Gold Cup a couple of months later. He was. Um, I, I was delighted again just to, 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 to keep the ride on him and um, went over with, I suppose, expectations of, uh, you know, uh, play, being placed, really. I didn't, you know, I'm not saying I didn't think he'd win, but it was, you know, you were thinking to yourself, you know, it's not going to happen type of thing, really. But he had the ability, you know, it was just a matter of everything going right and it couldn't have went any better. And did you have going over there, obviously, the doubt that one man wouldn't stay? Definitely. We all said, you know, it was sort of a, uh, nearly a well-known fact that he was yeah. a, a doubtful stayer. So we were always going to kind of test his, his, his stamina and uh, uh, he, he, he really put it to the test. And rough quest, of course, eventual runner up. He went on and won that year's uh, entry dash. He? he did, and uh, like at, at one stage here, like it looks like he's nearly going to, you know, for a, for a horse that stayed so well that won a national, he looked like he was going to come and, and trouble uh, uh, Imperial Call. But at the end, um, 
In fairness to Imperial Call, he was, he was only getting going. Connor, he'd some turn of foot, didn't he, for a stay in chase? The way he tanked through the race, he got in tight for his second last day and he picked up Bradley again, the ear half pricked her up straight with you. Yeah, no, he wasn't slow at all. I remember um, at some stage, a, a two and a quarter mile chase in Leperstown. Uh, I rode Strong Platinum for Christy Roach, who was, uh, you know, he won three times in, in, in Punchdown at the festival over two miles. And um, Imperial Call beat me, I think he beat me six or eight lengths in Leperstown over two and a quarter I couldn't believe it <laughs> you know so he was he was far from far from slow that feeling walking down our front 10 years since Ireland had won a gold cup it was I don't know I, I, it was amazing like um, I, I suppose again just not even thinking maybe it was going to happen that you know yeah, and the crowds, like it was just, uh, it was electric. Like, and you know, going down the, the shoot was one thing, but when you walked into the parade ring, that was that was a different, <laughs> different job altogether. Can you the remember crowds. what your emotion was going no. by the line? Your first Cheltenham winner to yeah. win it at the highest level in the Gold Cup. Yeah, I, I, like even at the time, a bit of a blur, really. Everything just kind of, it just happened, really, you know, and. Uh, it was, yeah, yeah, amazing. Like, was look the at the crowds. The it was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. So, uh, as I said, like, and I remember when I got down, I was just thinking, you know, the, the crowds were there. I was just thinking, like, if, if I lose anything, a leg cut or something, you know, exactly like something. Or that's that's one thing I don't remember yeah. do thinking yeah. about. Uh, but, uh, yeah, crazy stuff. That's the man that played him, Tom O'Donnell. Tell us about uh, Fergie Sutherland, the trainer, uh, a Korean War veteran. He only trained a handful of horses, didn't he? He did. He'd only a, a cup down in, in in West Cork, and uh, but he, he just liked a couple. He didn't want anything big or flashy mm. or uh, a lot of horses or anything. You know, I think he held the record in in England in Newmarket for. Uh, a horse that won so many sprints or something uh, right. back in the day. Yeah, he's you know, but he came back to to, to West Cork to have a quiet life. And uh, as you said, he had tra he trained for Lissaland Farms and just had a couple of horses and very very good at what he did. When he once he had, had the time with them and that that's what he wanted. They were an American owners. Where the Lissaland Farms? Um, he lived in America. I think six months of the year and and somewhere Sweden or somewhere. The other six months, I think David Blackburn, mm. and I'm not sure he's American or, or actually English. I, I, I met him a few times, but honestly, not sure. But um, I they, wrote a they, winner for them on the flat, and I got a fax. Uh, the next time I was riding the horse, <coughs> fax, fax back then. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, go, go to the front and go as hard as you can and hell for leather or something on yes. the fax. That was my instructions yeah. the next time I rode a horse, yeah. anyway. So I got, a, I, I got a few of those yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> We, first uh, run back, no? First run back, uh, Fergie had retired, Raymond Hurley uh, had taken over the licence and uh, the, Mr Blackburn was there and he just said to me, do the usual, just go out and blitz them type of thing and I said, God, I said, bottomless ground, 12 stone, a lot of weight to give away everywhere, first run of the year, you know, and I said, would we not drop them in, just, you know, pop around and you know, come with later class, on. Class without kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just set him up for the year and he said, no, he says, out in front, you know, and I got to the start and I was tossed and kind of said, oh no, here I can't do it at a horse, you know, mm -hmm. and hacked around behind him, joined uh, Adrian McGuire on Tell the Nipper at the last, absolutely cantered in three or four lengths, um, but... But boss man wasn't happy. <laughs> was not happy with the performance of, of me. So uh, you didn't ride him the next day, or did you? I no. did ride him the next day, but that was it. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't happy. He just wanted him to to go out and and, and do what he wanted to do. So look, anyway. <laughs> okay, well, it was one of the. It was the vintage year, one of the vintage years of uh, two mile champion hurdle horses. Wasn't there some great uh, rivalries between yourself, Harchie Ball, Brave Inc., uh, Max Joy as well, Rooster Booster and et al. Yeah, listen, uh, again, four, five, any of them could have won a, a champion hurdle. Um, some of them won Irish champions. You know, they all were mm. top class horses. It was, there was no easy, easy race anywhere along the line at, at, at the time. They were, they were fabulous horses. And he's got a backstory, of course, that has to be mentioned. Uh, obviously, Kevin did win a good bumper on him, but... Uh, Must have been a good horse. <laughs> all, <laughs> all, all the signs were there, Connor. All the signs exactly. were there. Exactly. Yeah. He be, he beat, 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 beat Central House. So, yeah, he beat Central House <clears throat> and Roger Lochran, to be fair, he was Desi Stable Amateur at the time, and Roger Lochran couldn't split the two of them, and to be fair, there was only a length and a half between them on the day. And uh, God be good to him, Kieran Kelly, I remember saying to me a week beforehand, give Desi a ring. 
I was to write Steve Brookshaw's. Actually, Gordon Elliott wrote it. I was booked to write Steve Brookshaw's, and I said, you know what? I think I'll write uh, for Desi, and that's how it came about. And Kieran Kelly had said to me, make sure to ring Desi. He said, you'll write one of ours in the Land Rover. Right. The day beforehand, Kieran Kelly says to me, I think you could be riding the best of ours. And Roger had told me there's very little between the two of them, and both of them are actually right. Yeah, and it, it, like, it's amazing what Central House mm. did, so it would have been hard to split them in fairness. So. I think it was a length and a half was actually hard. Right, it was in it. So Roger was right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, and of course, say, the fabulous dog season, and uh, you picked up the ride in tragic circumstance with Kieran Kelly as well, documented in Much Missed Man. Yeah, I'm sure he, he, you know, anybody will tell you he made the horse really, you know, Desi, Lord rest in him too, he'd, he'd, he'd told you the same, that it was a lot of a lot of Kieran's hard work and, you know, that, that made him and all the schooling he did on him and, uh, yeah, sad way to, to get a ride, but look, somebody had to had to, had to get it, I suppose, and um, thank God uh, they picked me. <laughs> yeah, and a good call to get under the circumstance, of course, to get a horse like him, but uh, it's interesting, uh, based on Sun Lines win, two mile, five furlongs, I thought he was a steer's hard horse, potentially to make him that type of horse, or even yeah, a cup yeah. horse, perhaps. Um, well, uh, yeah, up till, I think, a week or two before the, the, the first champion hurdle, um, the, the Coral Cup, he was favoured for it all along, and uh, looked, I won't say a certainty, but, you know, he looked a, a very worthy mm. favourite, and I was thinking, lovely, you know, he'd be going here with a nice chance, but Desi rang me a week or, or two before, the, the, the Carlin just said no he says we're, we're going to switch and go to the champion and uh, Are you a bit surprised by that? I was yeah I was um you know, I, I thought, as I said, he looked at horses, you know, Carl was written all over him, and uh, I kind of thought, you know, champion, oh God, I don't know, um, but there you go, Desi knew more than I did. It gave you a bit of rope in the first for it, was that, did it didn't really respect you, or just you got away well out of the I'd, A bit of both, I'd say, mm. we got away well, but I'd, I'd say like that, he, he was a 33 to 1 shot, really, and I'd say they were happy to let him go along. Um, I remember Ruby kind of saying after the race, he said, you know, he said, you got it very easy up there. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> enough, like for a champion hurdle, you're so used to looking, for, as soon as the tapes go up, you go lickety split, you've hacked around here. Yeah, you? we flew down to the first one or two and literally then just pulled up and quickened down along the back, pulled up again up the little hill, where in fairness, I'd say one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from Mouse Morris up, the, up that little hill at, at the mm. back and he said if I ever when I was riding from he said if I ever see you making <laughs> a bit of ground up there he says I'll kill you he said it's, it's, it's a place he says take a breather there and he said fill your horse up and then when you, you turn to come down the hill you've 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 a horse full of air so you know it was a great bit of advice and uh, it, it worked great for him and there was the red hot favorite of that year of course the reigning champion hurdle winner rooster booster back in uh, second last yeah Richard Johnson um again I'd say very happy to, to, to to, to leave me at it and you know I'd say he thought it was only a matter of, 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 of you know coming and, and, and grabbing him but uh, he's a tough cookie it was indeed and you can see here what you're talking about this climb on the old track if you like Connor. when you get up it just bursts along if you like if you, if you get racing against that because when you turn your free wheel down the hill but if you're not if you're in comfort zone at that stage you're not going to finish your race yeah, absolutely and you, it's, it's probably hard to see on television but it, it is actually quite mm. uh, quite an incline for, for a furlong or so and they're and just there left handed turn as well like. yeah it is and uh, you know it's a, it's a it's a different track I, I think uh, riding it to what you see on the on the television I couldn't believe when it, the first year I went you know uh, the difference I saw in it, uh, the, the hills and things, but uh, it suited him. Race begin to develop now. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm, I'm I've plenty of horse. Um, quickened a little bit. I uh, don't know how well anything is going behind me, but at this stage I'm thinking like he's going to get home. I'm definitely going to be involved. So uh, without going from, I just thought you know we'll 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 push on a little bit and and, and hopefully get some of them out of the comfort zone. And when he won the Sun Lines here before, he was outpaced two out and he stayed on really strongly over two miles five. So you're thinking now at this time you're not going to be yeah, good for a stamina at least. Exactly, you're going to get home. You're definitely you're you're going to get you know a, a couple that have to come travelling very well to get by you. Um, and when I turned in, I really thought here now we've 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 a chance, but still I didn't think he was going to do what he did. And, and then Richard Johnson thought he turned it to perfection. Yeah, absolutely, as well. and and looking at it now, he he did. He couldn't have done any more. In fairness, and, and just he was definitely a, had it there, yeah. Yeah, just literally at that. And again, when he went by me at the last, I just thought, oh, that's it now. But uh, God, I couldn't believe when I, I asked him for a bit more the way he pulled it out. He's kept lengthening all the way to the line. Obviously, he knew he'd stay well after winning a Southern Lions the year before. Exactly, yeah. And he travelled so well. And one thing about him, his jumping was just... I've never, ever... Not even ever 
ridden a horse, but I've never seen a horse that get from one side of a hurdle to the other side as quick mm. as he did. And he did it all himself. If you you were just had to leave him alone. And however he did it, I don't know. I've often seen a photo of him, but he's, he's nearly his front legs have nearly landed before his his hind legs have taken off. Whatever his technique was, but it was it was um, it was a good one. David Casey, the congratulator as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and pa, pa, young Pauri Groach. <laughs> That's the time he took off his glass. And he they were lost, I think. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, points, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is your second winner at the Cheltenham Festival. Your first Imperial call, Gold Cup. Your second champion hurdle, Shango. <laughs> John Berry. What do you think of coming back in here? Uh, listen, um, again from uh, thinking I'm going over to ride a Carl Hurdle winner, um, it was all boss Arthur. And... Uh, you know, to, to, to go and win a champion hurdle then, uh, having, having thinking I'm missing the card hurdle winner type of thing, it uh, was amazing, absolutely amazing. And again, you know, um, kind of in the, the later years of, of, of my career, so to come across those horses at, at that stage, sure, it was, it was amazing. And to ride a winner like this, Desi Hughes, Desi, of course, as we know, a legend of the game in his own right, but he'd been through quite time for maybe 10 years training, and he landed on a couple of horses like this uh, yeah. back in the big time. Absolutely, uh, you know, the, and that's the game it is, but like as you said, to, to have gone through such a, a barren spell for a long time and to come across these mm. horses, you know, he was always obviously sure able to train, uh, but to, to, to come across these was, was amazing. And both he and Central House were kind of the turning point with Desi as well, Arthur that barn spell and they were I know like he was a cheaply bought horse wasn't he at the he was draw, and he was by Archway Sprinter yeah yeah like again you know how, how would you how would you go and buy him really you know as you say no pedigree really um, he wasn't overly big mm. he was never going to be a chase or so you know it was a, it was a great great but call by Desi but he was a nice model of a horse and Desi always bought a nice model a nice physical didn't yeah, he yeah he was he was very well proportioned uh, he was strong and as you say, he was a, he was a nice model, but uh, great, great, great call by Desi. And he was a great trainer, Desi, wasn't he? He was. He really, really was. Horses always looked amazing. Uh, they were always fit. Loved them just being ridden nice and handy and kept it uncomplicated. And uh, yeah, he was a lovely man to ride for. I went to school as well. Every Tuesday and Friday in the car, around eight hurls, you'd they, see them go around there as a bunch. Fly around. It. They <laughs> used to fly. You say, "Will you give me a shout?" <laughs> and he was always a great man to teach uh, the young lads, you know, at the amateurs, he always had a great bunch of uh, conditionals, young riders they'd like to bring up from, you know, keep them grounded, but give them plenty of chances. He was always very loyal to his jockeys too, wasn't he? He was, he was very good, like Garrett Cotter, you know, Roger, um, Brian Cooper, you know, he always had good, good lads, but there was always good lads there because, again, Desi would give them a, a chance, would teach them, um, but again, lads won't wait anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're gone in the morning if you don't yeah. let them ride something, do you know? Yeah. But he was he was very, very good, and mm. um, as you said, taught him, but going around that eight hurdles there and every Tuesday or every Friday, you know, mm. um, great experience for the lads. And, of course, we went back to the second year, Connor. You had a really good run. You won a punch <coughs> down afterwards. Uh, what were your hopes going into the second uh, champion hurdle bid? Yeah, well, obviously you were, you were a bit more confident the, the, the second year because, mm. again, he, had, he went back to punch down. He'd won there. So he, he proved it was no fluke. Mm. Um, but, again, you were taking on probably nearly a better better bunch uh, this year, you know, with Brave Inc., uh, Max Joy, um, Archibald, well, you know, um, it was never going to be easy, but again, we, we popped off, done the same thing, um, got a few lengths at the, at the first and, 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 and again rode the race the way we wanted to. You went the first year with no pressure, obviously 33 to one shot, I think he was favourite this year. Mm. Did you feel more pressure on your shoulders that year? I didn't really, in fairness, like, Lara Byrne, fantastic man to ride for as well, you know, he never interfered. Uh, Desi, again, sure, you know, go out and do, you, you know, at this stage there was no instructions, you, you know, there was never any chat about it. So, no, I didn't really, and, you know, when you'd have that much faith in a horse, it, it takes a lot of that pressure away. And with the blinkers on, of course, it was an inspired decision the previous year to put the blinkers on. You can see why jumping the last year or go, his ears are pricked. He's always just saving a bit for himself. Yeah, like he was far from on Jeremy, obviously, as, as we know. But it was just, um, especially when you're going to make the running in those sort of races, if you have any doubt, you know, it'll just help him concentrate and you're always going forward. And as I say, his jumping was, was so sharp with, with the blinkers on. Um, it, was, it was a great call. 
And when you look back at the result of this champion hurdle, we get to see the final four and a half, what happened then. But when you look back at the horse for in the race, well, Cornet Hall, Max Joy, Inter Sky, Vol Falcon, all out of Rooster to Booster, back in front. This goes on, it's a proper Yeah, no, it's hour. a proper, you, you don't just pick one or two out, like there's five or six there could have easily um, been the winner type of thing. Um, like Brave Inca, he beat me the year before on, on uh, in the Supreme Novice mm. on War of Attrition. Do you know? So like all that form is it's amazing. So yeah, it was a proper proper race. You had some great rivalries, Brave Inca, uh, Jesse's Horse, Max Jai, Harnsey Bald as well, Irish Champion Hurdles, and there was some some great finishes. And there was very little between you. Yeah, no, there was very uh, any day that they all turned up, as you said. There was never much in it, do you know? They were all, and in fairness to all of the horses, they, they seemed to always turn up. There was mm. never any of them very consistent. Uh, uh, very yeah. consistent, and a lot of runs. And um, no, it was a fantastic time for hurdlers. Hurdle. Was there? I think was it Max Jai beat Brave Inc. And you were back in third and hard uses. Was it a length and a quarter separating the three? Yeah, roughly? Um, uh, yeah, I might have been beat a bit further. I think he again. Uh, you just knew that day. Funny enough, with him down the back, we were struggling, and it, it just wasn't him. But again, you know, to be beaten by those two, <laughs> no disgrace in that either, no, like, I, you know. And you, you say he came alive when he got to Cheltenham this horse, just whenever the competition, the track, it just seems to spark him up at the I time think, of year. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, the, the track, I think, really, he, he just loved it. I, I think the, the ups and downs, the turns, that sort of thing really suited him well, you know. Take two, repeated last year, but you know, most know that Harch Ball's talking in summer here, given the way he's been performing all winter. Yeah, you're, you're only waiting for him to come to us like he did. Um, but actually, when he did come, um, and I could kind of actually just literally after last year, you could just see his head just rising a bit. <laughs> I thought, oh, and I was actually more worried about Brave Inca on the mm. outside having outstayed me in the Supreme Novices. Um, I thought maybe he's the one, but in fairness to Hardy, like he absolutely just put the head down and wanted it more. And given the fact you're headed by Rooster Booster last year and the way you finished up the hill, you must have had some hope, as you said, that your man hadn't got away from the harsh ball as quickly as he might have done. Exactly, yeah, you, you, I, you knew you were getting home, but it was just what harsh ball was probably going to find. But. As I said, you know, you could just see, I could just see in the corner of my eye, his head kind of rising a bit. And when I saw that happen, I said, oh, we have a good squeak here. <laughs> good camera shot on the day. You might have seen it, but Noel Mead and uh, Desi Hughes watched the race together. Desi Hughes said, right. well done to Noel Mead, I believe, after the last, almost like well done. And then right. it all changed. All changed, you're yeah. You are happy enough for uh, it. Absolutely, like as I said, but uh, the opposite to Hart, you all... Hardy's head used to go down mm. and you could feel him lengthening with, when his head go down and again when, when you knew his head was down it was going to take a fair one to go by him. <laughs> Different emotions there Paul Carver does obviously. Yeah he's... sure I'm sure God like uh, you know he, I, I know he got slated for the right but uh, to me he, he would done absolutely nothing on it was the horse mm. like he got beaten the county hurdle as well with t 10 six on his back or something so and it proved later like you know Kempton or uh, Newcastle fighting fifth flat tracks mm. suited yeah, him best like exactly well. he yeah, just, yeah. He probably he probably just barely got to but exactly just barely and and his class got him through on the flat tracks you know so um no it's fantastic winner number three the Cheltenham festival one goal cup and two champion <laughs> orders <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do those small races. No, 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 no. We leave them. <laughs> when, when you go back to that winners enclosure, 33 to 1 chance, Kevin said the year before, there was more, a lot more expectation this occasion. The way the race worked out, uh, the scenes there, you don't repeat that again. Like It was quite special to see what happened on, the, on that day. Absolutely. Like you, you know yourself going into that winners enclosure. Like It's, 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 it's special. Kevin but I <laughs> 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 but to uh, to walk in, in into it, and you know, coming up the the the, 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 the walkway before you enter, you know what's what, what's what's coming mm. like, and it's, it's it's special. But it must be totally, I don't know, just from the time you pull up, 
and listen such the walk the length of the walk back in and all the people they're roaring at you the Irish lads are roaring at you whatever you must feel on top of the world sure, of course you do and like to look up into the stands and the, the, the thousands and thousands of people that are there and it's yeah it's, it's there's nowhere like it nowhere in, like in it. Ireland England I think only Royal Ascot and Chelham is people that you actually feel like you're in a football stadium that kind of a feel that you're in a pure amphitheatre with the crowd only looking at you really yeah, I suppose yeah, when actually, you do win yeah exactly you're walking down and like even the people at the they are they're not turning away looking into the, you know they're actually looking at at, the, mm. at you and the horse like and it's it's um, your they're, centre they're, of attention yeah. your number one yeah absolutely 60, 70 thousand people yeah and that's what they're there for yeah. you know they're they really they like their horses and they love it okay we're going to have a look at uh, the Irish champion hurdle footage of that mm. as well is the next one that we're going to have uh, a look at would have been the Ooh, following season, wasn't it? 2007, uh, was it? Yeah, and this, this yes, 2007, bounced, yeah. Bounced back to form as such, wasn't it? He'd been through yeah, a tough time. Yeah, he'd had, yeah. yeah. Um, he'd had a, a few very, very below power runs as, as such. And uh, But again, I remember I remember, I remember Desi saying saying um, to us, you know, in the prayer that day, he just felt he, he was back to his best. And, and again, it, Brave Inca, Max Joy, you know, they're all there. And Nepsam probably wasn't attracted to brought out the best of him as such, but on this day he was very, very good. He was very, very good. Like, I, I, I again, if I thought he was going to get beat, I think, that, as you said, I think the track would have beaten him. But uh, it was just a bit softer that day. It just took a bit of getting, mm. um, which suited him perfectly because I, I just thought something with a bit of speed it'd it, it do him on the day. But there you go again. The years go, and he's just yeah. always had that little bit yeah. left. If he, if, if, keep, if he didn't get by you quickly, you exactly, chance. you'd have to go by him quickly. Mm. If you didn't go by him quickly, he'd he, he'd, he'd do you, and. There was no end to him. He just hit so much hard, it was unbelievable. And that's obviously what Paul Carrier had no, you know, obviously he was a horse who probably just barely got the two miles, but that was what he was trying to do in the champion hurdle beforehand, try and do you, come with one run and try and mug you late on and yeah. use his flat speed uh, to his advantage. Absolutely, because he knew if he took me on too early, even though he'd go by me quick, mm you'd come back and do him so he had to leave it as late as possible which he did and then Harshwell just didn't just didn't pick up for him and some training performance by Desi as well to get him back after a couple of below power efforts because a horse who's ridden that way he wears his heart in his sleeve you make plenty of use of him it's hard to keep them at that level isn't it it is and like the, especially him gave himself a hard race every yeah. day well I won't say hard race but he was always there to be counted you know um, and even though he'd keep a little bit at the same same time, by the time he got to the line, he'd given everything. What was the biggest part of his game? You know, you talk about his jumping, his toughness. What made the difference from us? The blinkers, what a combination uh, or anything, but he could pick one thing out. Yeah, uh, his jumping. Mm. I, I honestly can't remember him making a mistake ever. Do you know? And even he'd get, as I say, he'd get as tight. He'd actually he'd be as quick. The tighter he got to a hurdle, he was nearly quicker than standing off. Um, as long as you left him alone and just didn't interfere with him. <laughs> That's that was yeah. the key, and, and that's why know. that's where champions are made. Really, is you see year in year out the good ones. That's the difference. They made eight, eight nine hurdles. If they can measure them the way they, a good one can, that, that exactly. That, that all you know, at, the end. In, at that at that level with those horses behind you, you miss one, you give a length away, they're gaining a length. You add all that up at the end, mm -hmm. and that that that's the difference at times. Trilling journey with him. Absolutely, he was he was an amazing horse to ride. Like in. Uh, again, very uh, uncomplicated. Mm. Just pop out there and let him roll along, and y you knew when he was right. And you know, as I say, he just took you everywhere. Jump brilliant. Simple. Was the second champion hurdle a little bit more special than the first? Because you you were an underdog. You were discarded going in the first year. The second year, then you gone back. Your favourite. You're there to be shot at. Was that that little bit more special than the first one? It yeah, it was. I suppose um, the first one was probably bit of a surprise in a way um, so to go back to second year as you said with a bit of pressure and then the way he won it the, the, the finish like sure it must be one of the best finishes in, in, in Cheltenham history mm. like so to, for all it's, that to be still, together still was still talked and you know. debated about <laughs> you know what, <laughs> yeah. what if Paul did this what yeah, if Paul did yeah, that yeah, yeah. no it is it's, it's, no it's not and as I said you know for me looking at Harris Paul and you know what he did after and uh, everything I think Paul was, was, was spot on on him and probably the first year as well when he was a 33 to 1 shot and if people probably questioned maybe the four maybe so you probably got a 
yourself and Desi Lar, born all the connections, right, we've gone back and now we've proven ourselves that we are a proper champion hurdle horse. Absolutely, because, I, and even after this, he went to Punchestown then and Rooster Booster came over mm. and beat him in, we beat him in that four or five events as well, so, you know, that... Did Hearts Ball take you on early that day? Is that the year that he... Points when he took you on early, early than you I'm would not have sure done. if it, or yeah. was it the following, the following year, year was I it think maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Paul was kind of saying well look <laughs> I'll give yeah, no yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll do what the punters want <laughs> 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 but obviously Paul knew better yeah uh, he did he set, he set sail on him before the second mm. last I think on him and Sure. That didn't work. No, that did, definitely didn't work. <laughs> Some great memories here from Hardy Eustace and, of course, Imperial Call. There'll be many more to come. Connor, before we come to War of Attrition, it wasn't all just about the obvious ones. Imperial Calls, Brave Inca's War of Attrition. You rode a lot of really, really good horses that might have just gone under the radar a little bit. The likes of Joe Mack, You Never Walk Alone, at Native Upmanship, amongst many others. Mm. Yeah, um, I suppose Native Upmanship definitely was the one that the Ryanair wasn't there at the time. Yes. Um, he was thir second in three champion chases. Mm. Um, Flagship Uberellas, I think, was the Flagship first, Uber was it? Uberellas, uh, Moscow, I think. Yeah. Um, Non-desert you up. Uh, can't think now. Maybe, maybe Flagship, was, did he win two? And he changed no, he yards and things. Yeah. Um, mm. Anyway, he was he was definitely one of the, the you know the horses that if there was a Ryanair there he'd have definitely you know won a couple of Ryanair. Fit Ryan bill because like, he go oh. on entry after Chelsea every year and win what that, twice at entry was it? Or? Yeah, twice yeah. at entry the Martel um, mm. race and he was it was made for him. Do you know? Mm. Uh, then we did try him in. Uh, he tried to uh, he tried three miles there as in, in Cheltenham, and uh, again he didn't get it. So he was really that horse that was mm. in between. Yeah. Um, but what a fabulous horse! I think one nine grade ones on him. Um, you know, a, a top class horse. You win four mm. grade ones on him. I think. I think. Well, am I right saying the first grade one he won? Tommy Tracy wrote it because you wrote Joe Mack. Is that right? No. No. Uh, he, Tommy won. Barry Cash won his maiden on him. I think in Leopard Sound. Uh, Tommy won where did Tommy win on him God I don't know now but he won I think he won nine grade ones in all nine and I think uh, I'm not sure he won the nine uh, Barry again now the, the Kilnock Bray chase I think he won three or four times Barry rode him one year and he was suspended uh, but oh, what a horse like you know uh, a horse as you say that he could have been an absolute champion if, if, if the right race was there for him. And of course, and usually he was in the Magnus as well to have a high class jumper in them uh, familiar navy colours. Yeah, it was fabulous and they really enjoyed him. And like again, a horse that, like Hardy, every day he went out, you know, he, he gave you 110%. He loved his racing and uh, wasn't over big or anything, but he was just a real uh, genuine horse. He travelled great, jumped super. He was a really, uh, you, uh, you loved riding him. Train, trained by Arthur Moore, of course, your stable jockeyed him for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fran Woods got 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 a a, a bad shoulder uh, injury in, in in the car accident, and uh, I went in. I was just kind of stepping in till he was back, and then kind of the winter was coming along, and it turned out that he, he was going mm. to get back. And, and Arthur said, "Would I? Would I?" Step in, I said. She's what I want. Again, one of the powerhouses at the time. Absolutely, like. and and uh, you know I'm killed saying it. Uh, I keep repeating myself about it. You, you know you need to be lucky at the time. Like I could have had, you know, another job at the time that you know you weren't available for it or, or or different things, and everything just fell into place like that, like those sort of jobs, and you know uh, graphic equaliser and the window. I've got to say, target trainer. <laughs> the the Labra Coral was his race. He loved it, yeah. and by God, he was by a master Cordy, at it. Was he? By yeah. Cordy, and he was uh, Frank Lacey trained mm -hmm. him, and uh, the owners felt he needed a, a, a man like Arthur to, to to get the best of him mm -hmm. and, and go to the likes of the Ladbrook, and uh, he, he surely did. He, mm -hmm. he he was he had him bang on for the day. He had him at the the right way at everything was, was perfect. How good know? a trainer was Arthur? Obviously Arthur's still training, but only a handful of horses now by design, mm. but his record is Listen, so, it's, it's, it's unbelievable like and it's it's probably only in, in, in the latter years that things changed. 
owners wanted things quicker. Mm. You know, Art was really, really unbelievable at getting horses ready, having them in the right races, having them at the right rating, knowing exactly what they were. And as I said, it's only in the last few years that things change with, mm. with, with the way racing is, and that's it, but an absolute master. And obviously some touch for you as well, to get a job like that as well, a yard full, what would you tread? 70, was, 70 80 60, horses tops? I saw the horses there at the time, and again, you know, good owners, good horses, all good types of horses, and uh, God, I rode a lot of winners, mm. Jeff fell won a... Uh, um, the Ascot race, the Ch Victor Chandler, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with great times and, and great horses. And, and you knew when you were riding for Arthur, you had a chance of getting a good one, and you come Christmas, come all them left for means as to war back in January, on to Chelham, on to Punchstown, you had a chance of picking up big races with Arthur. Absolutely, he always, as I said, always had a, a couple of good horses for mm -hmm. good races and kept them for the good races, you know, didn't run them here, there and everywhere. He, he, he targeted them at Kept a few at, at for the handicaps as well. Uh, no, <laughs> not one or two. <laughs> Couple of them a bit late for me. <laughs> but no, absolute genius. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolute. And he'd obviously work back. He'd have his main target, let it be a Labrook hurdle, let it be a race at Cheltenham, Punches Town Ferris, and work the season back from that, wouldn't he? Yeah, well, I, 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 probably a good example, I think, is, is graphic equaliser. I think when the lads came with him, with, with the horse to him, or went to meet him about the horse and um, I think he, he he basically told him look he'll have one run before the lad broke he looked at his rating he had it all worked out and he said he'll have one run uh, and go to the lad book and that's what kind of thinking Jesus a bit miserable like, you know, we'll have <laughs> we another few a bit more, exactly actually. yeah and that was it we did he, he ran in fairy house I finished fifth on him uh, in, a, in a handicap hurdle Probably could have finished a bit closer, but uh, <laughs> on the day. You were, but, you were, uh, you were at your best. That <laughs> no, it was not You were both learning, anyway. So exactly. Yeah. I was only getting to know him. <laughs> but uh, sure, you're right. That lad broke with, with, as I say, with the perfect rating, mm. and he done exactly what uh, Arthur had said he'd do. And I don't think people really realise what an art that is, because that takes some planning, organisation, and talk about knowing your horse inside out. That's it. You have to know them so so well, and to, to kind of say like you won't run for for two months beforehand to have him bang on on the day then is that that takes doing talking about great trainers you struck up a great relationship with christy roach as well joe mac strong platinum king wa glory alone. king wa glory yeah yeah paddy burke had the, the license yeah. at the time and uh grimes, God, the Galway grimes Galway 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 place. Place. Yeah. again he was another just a matter of keeping mm. him keeping him on his four feet you'll, you'll never walk alone you'll of course walk well. alone. we're going to actually yeah. have yeah. a look at you you never horses. walk alone here mm. now he How was good probably, was he, he, I was just going to say he was probably one of the best horses I ever rode, but he was he, he he probably was just a bit hit and miss at times, but when he was good, it, there was nothing like him. Moscow Flyer, Flyer. Doran's Pride, yeah. Moscow Express, yeah. just and dropping out of it there. Just doing an absolute hack canter, like he was just an unbelievable horse. Couldn't believe he got beat in, in, in Cheltenham in the Supreme Novices. After this win, of course, yeah, or before this before win, this, me, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But he was, he was just, you know. I mean, you look back at Moscow Flyer, mix him with this bracket at that time. Yeah. Serious bit of form. Yeah, absolute serious form, you know, and look, just an absolute canter to him. He was, uh, he, he, he'd some engine. Like, you've made very good horse look very ordinary. Though. I don't <laughs> think it was a stroll around the park. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely cantering. Like, he just, uh, you know, he travelled so easy, jumped so well. Um, God, he was, no, he, as I said, he was, you know, he was, he was definitely was one of the better ones. What, what, one thing about your riding all the way through your career, you never wore gloves. No, I, I hated them. I just, I, I don't know what it was about them. I probably early days I'd ridden out with them at home and mm -hmm. things. Um, but I just, I, I, I don't know, just the feel of them, and I just felt, I don't know. Even, even the worst rain no, I never seen you no, wear a pair. No, yeah. couldn't yeah. wear them or it cold or anything. It didn't. No, no, just uh, rather chance without them. More naturally, yeah. <laughs> Joe Mack, he was not a very good horse. He was. He was a hell of a horse. Again, Cheltenham um, and Alexander. Bank would beat me in the bumper. bumper Ruby. Uh, Ruby. Uh, again, just outstayed him. As it turned out, he, he went to Aintree for the novice hurdle. Again, after, sorry, Orla Loy beat him then in the Supreme Novice, I think. Mm. And then we went to Aintree and he absolutely hacked up. Flat track, a lot mm. of speed. By top of Nora, I think he was. Uh, 
but uh, a hell of a horse again ooze class but probably just a hardy ball mm, in a way type type, type horse, horse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of pace um like uh, I remember the commentary in entry, like they were just saying, like you know, they couldn't believe he hadn't moved going to the last. He was that was his that was his his type of track. And strong platinum, he was a very good chaser. Oh God, he was yeah, he was he was different class altogether. Um, jump, travel, uh, real sharp horse. Um, I think as I say, two he won the Power Gold Cup and then sorry he went to Punchdown and he won two. He mm. won the novice. Uh, two mile, and then he he won the BMW as well. That was the three day festival, four day yeah, festival max. Yeah, he yeah. Won two back to back in yeah. uh, in Punchdown. He was yeah, he was a, he was a he was a proper one. He never Cheltenham was never uh, the ground was always just a bit on the soft side for him. He was a strong gale horse and just always wanted real good ground, and it, it made a difference to him. And another brilliant trainer, Christy Roach. What was it like <laughs> to ride for Christy? <laughs> Different <to> Arthur. <laughs> 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 um, so look, he, he again, he he was brilliant. Uh, again, he left a lot of it to yourself, you know. But uh, he'd have, again, he, a bit like I, I, I suppose, in the sense he'd have things worked out mm. to the last. He'd have every other horse in the race worked out, mm. you know. He'd he he he'd be thorough, and my uh, God, he was good at what he did. He's some string of horses back then. He did. He, he, yeah. he was the envy of the curry. He'd have twenty, <clears> twenty two, <throat> or twenty three lads riding out the best of riders, the best of looking horses. Yeah. You'd see them going around the what it now is the sand gallop, the all all weather wood ship, yeah. and they were. They, you wouldn't draw them. As no, you wouldn't. Guys say some of those as you, as you at. said, all big, fine, old-fashioned types, uh, like a butterfly. God, she was some mare. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as you said, you never walk alone. John, like all those. God, they were they were, they were fabulous horses. Uh, and to go from being a top top flat jockey to being a top jumps trainer, he was a very very good trainer. But to cover both codes like he did, Chris, he quite remarkable to uh, see that. Absolutely, happen. and and always had the interest in the in the jumping mm. horses for some reason. Do you know? As you say, you'd imagine. It'll be a, a pro- natural progression yeah. to go flat, but no, he loved the jumping, loved it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, War of Attrition. Mm, War of that Attrition. Another, another too, course. Sorry. Yeah, go on, yeah. Um, uh, David Casey was was first shock in, in Mouses at the time, and uh, where I think I might have beaten him on, on one of Christie's uh, in in a maiden, I think in Punchestown. Um, can't think of the name of him now, but. Uh, Moving on anyway, there was a winner's hurdle in Navin and David was riding for uh, Vincent Daly on a good few horses with Francis Crowley and Mouse at the time. Oh, yeah, the, the man who used to Promily, own, uh, Promily and those yeah, horses, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think... Boss uh, Doyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, David went to Air or somewhere to ride for Vincent and uh, Mouse ran me would I ride... Uh, more attrition in, in Navin in a, I think it was a, a, a winner's hurdle I said absolutely uh, rode him there, won on him and I, I remember saying to both Michael O'Leary and Mouse, I said that's the nearest thing I've I've ridden to Imperial Call. Even then? Then, yeah, mm. he was just, I think Max Joy was actually second that day and he absolutely just wiped the floor with them like, you know, and he just gave you the feel of everything speed, stamina, jumping attitude, everything mm. and uh, Went on from there, David got back on him, uh, obviously he was first jockey, and uh, I think Nace then shortly before Cheltenham, uh, he ran bad uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in Winner's Hurdle, and uh, David opted to ride Maria Rawlins for Pat Fahey, Pat Fahey yeah. in, in the Supreme Novice, and uh, Mouse Ramey says, you're back on, I said, lovely, and then um, he was second at 50 to 1, I think, mm. um, uh, team Brave Inc. Brave Inc. beat me Brave Inc. Cash, yeah. and I, I stayed on him from, from, from then so again you know just a bit of luck he ran bad on the day in, in Ace and David got off him and you know that's as I say it's, that's, that's how lucky I was Top of the hill Gold Cup again Mouse <coughs> we, we walked the track and Mouse said what are you thinking and I said being honest with you I said he's such a good jumper I said I don't want to go down the inside because I said he'll land up on top of something or something makes a mistake in front of him he needs a bit of light and Mouse said sure why don't you ride him like a road imperial call and it's it's pretty much what we did how did Michael Lee let you drop him in so far that day <laughs> at least kept him wide on you <laughs> 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 and this is obviously a turning point in jump racing as well because this was the start of the Chickens Town. Yeah, era, yeah, wasn't it? yeah, really? it was really. Um, have had many horses, no, he no, I think his first jumper was with, with David Watchman, I think. Two, 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 two,
and uh, um, then they started, well, no, no, no. It wasn't him next, but you know he was at a, 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 a lot lesser level. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And uh, definitely when this lad won one here, I think he he, he got the bug <laughs> big time. <laughs> Connor is a very young horse this day, this seven-year-old, if you like, and uh, you know he's on the improve, but he did a bit to prove getting here to this race. Yeah, he did. He did. Now um, he, you know. Uh, <laughs> He had very little experience, really. I rode him in the Arkle the previous year, and uh, we made a terrible mistake down the back. He actually just over-jumped and got out in his head. And I remember kind of sitting up on him in the Arkle, just going, you know, there's no point in giving him a hard race. But uh, I said to me, he says, he says, Gold Cup next year. And I kind of thought, geez, that's a fair oh, statement only, now. Only a mile and a quarter longer. Yeah, exactly, exactly yeah. yeah. And uh, But all year, he, he was quite adamant. But it was Michael's first year of sponsoring the Ryanair. Ah. And uh, I remember Michael coming down to watch him doing a bit of work in, in Mouse's Neverard's Grange and uh, worked great and we went back and we were having a bit of breakfast and myself and Mouse and Michael said, look, he said, you know, obviously my first year at Ryanair, love him to be there, he look a, a, a sort of a good thing mm. in, in the Ryanair <clears throat> and what did we think? And Mouse said, I think he's a Gold Cup horse and he just said to me, what I said, look, I said, he asked him a big shout in the Gold Cup but I said, yeah, I agree, like he'd probably win the Ryanair. So Michael stood up and walked out the door and he said, I'm paying you to train him. He said, I'm paying you to ride him. He said, it's your call. And when, when the door was closed, Mouse said, Gold Cup it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the thing know. about Mouse Morris. When he <clears throat> runs one at Cheltenham, no matter what price there, you have to respect all big time. Well, I, again, when I was first shocking for him back in the day, um, he sent a lot of horses over for, say, the novice hurdles, the supreme novice and the sun lions. And now these horses at home were very, very ordinary horses. And I'd be thinking, God, you know, but they all finished, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth. They all ran a race. Yeah. He never brought a horse over that didn't have a have a shout. Get, some way get competitive, something yeah. competitive, exactly, yeah. Uh, Barry Gardy, of course, riding for late Michael O'Brien, the inside, Connor. Uh, forget the past. Forget the past, yeah. Uh, again, we're just traveling so, so easily. Um, and jumped, you know, again, he, he did a lot of scope. Uh, but so many horses off the bridle, they're good horses, like, you know. For well, his favourite. Yeah, and he was one of the biggest uh, fields ever. It was 24, I think. Were you worried about the trip at this point in the race? Obviously, it had bypassed his fence, but you're stepping into the unknown somewhat. You were stepping into the unknown, but again, I, I wasn't worried about it. Um, before the race, I probably w w was thinking, would he get it? But he had travelled so well, jumped so well, um, he he he'd so much left. I knew, you know, even here, like he picked up and quickened. Mm. Um, no, it was a no doubt here. And it's jumping again in one of his big attributes. Really, really was, you know, um, especially like he's little, you know, perfect there. Like even the height he gave that, you know, after going three and miles and one, and then to come up where he came up at the last was was amazing. I mean, see so many horses from so far out being so, uh, so hard off the bridle. It was a proper run goal cup. It was, as I said, I think it was the biggest field. I think we were 24. Yeah, I think we were the bottom horse there, at, 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 you know. Um, so there was always going to be pace, and when the pace had relaxed, somebody would be there to take it up as well. So, as you say, it was a proper run race. Was he quite similar to Imperial Call? Just looking at him there, yeah. I know you dropped him in, but he wasn't a slow horse either, no, was he? No, he wasn't. He, he really wasn't. Um, the, the, the there were uh, there definitely were similarities. Yeah, uh, he mightn't have been as quick as as Imperial Call, but definitely the, the, the were the, there were similarities. Yeah. You went on and won the Punchestown Gold Cup, and then a few weeks later at the festival. He did. We went back to Punchestown and no pace. And most of what are you going to do? He said, I'm just going to keep it simple and make all. And he said, way with you. And again, that's the type of horse he was. You could have dropped him in last. You could have made it on him. It didn't matter. Like he was, he was, oh, he was. So simple to ride. And there's Michael coming back in as well. Terrific. Second Gold Cup winner now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this was different, obviously, because uh, Mouse, I'll never forget when we I won the first Gold Cup, we were going out that night, Mouse said to me, I was we were staying in the same hotel and he says can I go out with you he said I said of course you can I said no problem I said why well he said look he said I'll probably never celebrate in the Gold Cup so he says this is as close as we get he says 
<laughs> out he came with us and sure ten years later to, to, to ride the winter farm was, was amazing. And another mm. brilliant trainer, Mouse Morris. Absolutely. Again, old high you know, loved the old fashioned types of horse. Wasn't mad for handicaps. Mm. Loved a good horse. You know, your Trapper John, Buckhouse, all those like they as most said, they they're what got him up in the mornings, mm. those good horses. Mm. And he always loved to have one at least, you know. Mm. But uh no, again, as Fran said, went to Cheltenham with horses that, to me, y- you wouldn't be dreaming of bringing, yeah. but they were competitive and, you know, he knew he knew what he had. A couple of runs the next season and then obviously he'd leg trouble, did he? Because he missed two years then after that. And then Davey Russell had the first jockey job. Down yeah, Jiggins, yeah. He, he got a, a leg, um, I think, the following year and they did a stem cell operation with him. And by the time he was back then, I was... I'd vamoosed I was gone <laughs> too old got the good day uh, got the good day uh, no 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 I didn't have to <laughs> <laughs> okay. thank god uh, now all evening uh, we've been hearing from Connor O'Dwyer uh, telling us all about Hardy Eustace War of Attrition Imperial Call etc it's been a fascinating listening um, and we want to give a nod to the, his son, Charlie, like father, like son, because um, he's doing well in the saddle, Charlie. And we've picked out one of uh, his recent winners, and it was a Battle It Out, who won at Nace. Uh, he, he dropped this horse out. We'll, we'll fence hop them, Martin, uh, through this race. This horse jumped brilliantly. He got him into a lovely rhythm, and uh, towards the end of the race, he timed his challenge really well. Yeah, he's obviously been taking lessons off his father. He looks uh, a really polished rider. I mean. He knows how to jump an obstacle, doesn't he? He certainly does, yeah. I looked at the, the race IQ data for this, and this horse um, uh, is clearly well handicapped, but he jumped absolutely brilliantly uh, throughout this contest, not least because Charlie was able to get him balanced and see a stride at his fences, and he gained 12 lengths on the field uh, throughout the race. And you'll see with a really big leap at the last, he gained five and a half lengths or so on the field just at the last fence as Charlie delivered him uh, late in the piece. It was a well-timed challenge on this horse who's pretty well handicapped he doesn't hold any entries but I'd, I'd, I'd tell you to, to bear him in mind going forward he's just crept forward at this stage uh, into mid division uh, from the rear and he was always going well but look at these jumps that this horse uh, puts in and now this is where I thought Charlie was really impressive just bringing him with his challenge in the home straight this was two and a half miles and watch the leap at the last that he gets out of this horse as I said gaining about five and a half lengths uh, at the last and then sprinting clear he's definitely a horse to follow and he was really well handled by uh, connor's son here we go seen a stride from a long way out there you go he's really seen that stride isn't that's it? good i mean listen i know nothing about jumping a fence but from where i could see there especially from the reverse angles he's a proper horseman and and a good jockey as well the way he's picked him up there and seen a stride at the last he was confident he must have been giving yeah. him a good feel um and he's traveled through He's won well. He's probably, has he idled in front there in the end? He probably. I think he. I think he was pretty well handicapped. Let's put it that way. But <laughs> it was his first go at two and a half miles. This horse. He'd be running at two miles, and he was up to up to two and a half. So he's obviously got some potential at that trip. But yeah. I just wanted to show it one because it's a horse for people to follow and keep an eye on. And two, we had Connor on, and I thought it was nice to show his son in, in fine action, following in his father's footsteps. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. I uh, hope Connor enjoyed uh, watching that, lads. Yes, he sure did. Connor, that must have given you great uh, uh, sense of pride and satisfaction, of course. A big pot to win with Charlie on board for JP McManus and, of course, Audrey there, which is well at Nace two weeks ago. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. Um, he was always a smashing horse when he came to us. Bit of a, a old-fashioned, big type, a bit, still a bit weak and a bit backward, but uh, to get there on the day, you know, as you said, Ke- or, um, Charlie to ride him, uh, Audrey being there, uh, and we'd had a quiet year, you know, so to come up with something like that, fantastic. Yeah. And obviously he took a very heavy fall, didn't he, at Punchestown. He's jumped absolutely brilliant. Now, that was only his second run in Handicap Company that day in this, but he took a heavy fall in Punchestown. Was it Punchestown? It was Punchestown, he had the second last. Um, I think, to be honest with you, he, he, was all, he always jumped well, but I think he nearly, he was overconfident the horse himself, and he just took a chance at the second last and paid a penalty and got a, got a heavy fall. I thought, you know, he, he was going to be in, a, in trouble, really, but he came back from it and, you know, we did a, a bit of schooling with him, and the minute we did, he, he kind of came back and faced up to it, and it, it you know, I'd say it stood to him at the end of the day, like on the day, I wasn't thinking that, but the other day now, for his second handicap, he was absolutely super. Where next with him? 
I'd say the, there's a, a, another listed um, novice handicap in Navan in about two and a half weeks. Um, the final of the, the EBF uh, novice series, and uh, I think that's two seven. I think that's where we'll we'll, we'll head with him. And obviously Charlie must give you great satisfaction as well. You're obviously, as we know, trained now since you stopped riding as well. But Charlie's with you most days of the week as well. And obviously a big help to you. Absolutely. And it's great to have him. And it, it gives those days a, a, an extra bit of a special, you know, uh, excitement to the day, mm. you know, to, 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 to have him. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's great. Thanks to JP and, and, and Frank that to leave him on him and, and be loyal to him and that uh, again it's, it makes those lads you know they don't get those chances too often and um, when they do it's great that they can take them and, and, and show that they can do you know what what what, what you're hoping they can do uh, exactly and uh, especially this time of year in the winter to pick up uh, get rides like that in good handicap chase to show them off like obviously Cheltenham next week he got to Martin Pipe race there's a chance maybe in the back of that picking up a nice ride there exactly you know I'm rooting around <laughs> I'm struggling at the minute but <laughs> for him but it is we, it's we all... the video again yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's um, of course it's a help yeah exactly do you know um, everybody has a conditional or two conditionals mm-hmm. and to get to those rides is, is very very hard so as I said that's a that's a huge it's a great boost for me but it's a big boost for mm-hmm. Charlie as well and he was very good in them in fairness to him do you know so it's great and for young riders at the minute you just got to be patient it's almost back to what you said when you started off that you've got to play the long game now and build up your contacts and, and experience and maybe in the long run that's not a bad thing either for likes of Charlie just at his stage of his career yeah exactly like it it, it, it stops those those, those as, as I was said going through the claim too too quick like Charlie's again that's probably his maybe sixth maybe seventh winner over fences from, from 30 winners mm. so again you know you need all that experience over fences before you, you lose your claim. So the longer he has the five pounds, to me, um, it, it, the better really, you know. Mm. Not better for me as well, obviously, but for himself, like, you know, because you get down to the tree and, you know, you, the lads are looking at it going, well, sure, for the sake of three pounds, I'd nearly put up the professional yeah. with the experience. Mm. It's exact same on the flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's, it's right, you know, why, you know, for the sake of three pounds, you'd be thinking, well, look, a lad has ridden, 100 winners is, is, is better value type of thing so the, the five pounds claim is a very very important uh, part of his career and obviously as Fran touched on it's like going back to the old days your days and not that it's that old of a day but it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really out of the I'm going to fall into that hole and I started digging now but it's so hard for these lads to get going especially during the winter months now isn't it it is and I've just noticed myself there lately you know a lot of, lot of races eight runners nine yeah. runners not a lot of runners you mm. know okay maidens fill up and whatever but a lot of those handicaps and things you know it's, it's, it's quiet and um, there's just so many many jockeys there and, and it is it's very hard for me as you said this time of the year the summer's a bit different alright there's plenty of uh, summer's a lot you different because you've yeah. uh, a lot of runners throughout the summer we've obviously a lot of jump racing as well and I find that kind of there's quite a few jump trainers that might just gear their season around to the summer jump because they're thinking right we're not going to be taking on I know obviously Gordon and Willie still have plenty of runners but yeah, not to the not same calibre yeah. uh, and I think that's the thing at the moment a lot of trainers are starting to change direction a little bit would you tend to agree or disagree with that? Yeah, well it seems to be that as you said there's definitely less runners and as you say okay you're, you're going to be Willie and Gordon but as you say not with the top Top class horses, you know, so you have a, a better chance in the in the summer months. Um, and the way the ground has been watered now mm. and things, the summer ground, the real good ground is, is kind of gone as a thing of the past, really. Yeah. So you can keep a, a, a horse back and, as you say, not campaigning maybe a lot in the winter and, and, and aim them around the summer. And that's when these uh, young lads and young girls start to tend to get going now, isn't it? During the summer, and if you can just build a bit of momentum through the summer, it'll carry on hopefully through the winter season. That's it, and you know, you give them the chance, or somebody gives them a chance, and they take it, and mm. um, they move on a little bit, and that, and those less than 10 winner races and less than 15 winner races for jockeys are they're a great great idea you know and it gives the 
the other lads a chance to, to take their holidays without missing anything and it, it gives the lads a great chance to showcase their, their ability. And it gets them then in with riding for trainers. It's like I see me with the, uh, with the apprentices there in a double meeting. Yeah. Uh, all the main lads will be going to one meeting. You, can, you have a chance of getting them into yards that they wouldn't necessarily ride for uh, that builds up contacts and start using them then going forward. Yeah, that's what it's about, as you say, getting into different yards mm -hmm. and, as you say, yards that you wouldn't get into if they were normal races and as I said they're a great idea and they're actually a great idea for the, the trainers as well those yeah. few maidens mm. there they're actually a more competitive race at the end of the day because nothing against you know the, the real good horse but you haven't got your odds on favourites that are going to go off and win you know two, you're nearly looking at two different races in some of the maidens but mm. those, tra those races for you know less than 20 winners for trainers they're, they're a great a great initiative. Very much so. And Conor, we spoke about all the great trainers you're in for over the years <coughs> and all. Jockey-wise, you've spanned a number of generations through your career, if you like, and, uh, you know, you went from right with my dad, that generation, to finish it off with the likes of Ruby, Norman. Uh, who would you, when you go down through the list, or where do you want to start? Because we, it's something yeah. we love talking about anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Oh, I think sure. everybody loves talking <coughs> about yeah, it. Yeah, you know, We love Jesus. asking you guys <laughs> who, uh, who they were. Um, Obviously, well, sure. Pat Berry, when he yeah. rolled over. Oh, of course, you know, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. looking in, retired. In <laughs> 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 Short fences was sorry, it wasn't. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, no I should look going back as you say. God, we're, we are going back a long way. But your dad, uh, you know, Tommy Car, Mindy, Tommy Carberry, our own mm. first flat race. Tommy Carberry was 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 riding. Mm. Um, you know, there was, there was great riders at the whole way through. Richard Dunwoody, Norman, um, Adrian McGuire, Charlie Carberry. Oh, you, you just keep going. Ruby, sure, God, you know, AP. You could. You know, there, there, there was a great, great um, uh, list of, of real top class, top class riders. Uh, 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 you know, since I started. And in your heyday, uh, was there one jockey? We all know you were so confident on a horse in, in any race. Nothing phased you. But was there one jockey that stood out that you always were slightly worried about him? On you, a big day. Well, no, the, the, the big day never bothered me actually. That I was actually, I used to enjoy the, the challenge of a big day actually. Uh, it was nearly the, the, the smaller day, you know, a Clamell or a Thurlis or that. Like Charlie was a, a nightmare, you know, he, like he, you, you just couldn't ride against him. Like he just either, you know, he'd either be gone and you'd, you'd be afraid to follow him or he'd be dropping in stock and yeah and he'd oh he, he, he was unbelievable you he, found he, him the hardest to yeah, read basically. yeah to read exactly yeah. you know and you know Aidan was training jumpers at the time so again you know <laughs> looking back at it now you know we didn't know what we were facing type of thing <laughs> 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 so Charlie was definitely a, a hard one, yeah, yeah. But he was—he was a brilliant, he did great brain, brilliant rider. And you and your riding career, you had very little, if any, injuries, did you? No, no I was lucky. Uh, a collar, few collarbones, bits and pieces. No, very, 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 very few. No, uh, just, just lucky. Which, in the greater scheme know. of things, is feck all when you're. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's nothing. Uh, a jump no, jockey, absolutely. Like. like I never broke an arm, never broke a leg. A uh, few concussions. Yeah, as I said, collarbones, ribs, you know, little things. I don't think it was ever out more than maybe two weeks type of thing. Yeah. You know, it's probably longer than on the sidelines. So, again, that, that, that helps you as well because you're, you're not losing rides, you're not mm -hmm. losing touch with trainers, you know. Um, so, uh, again, that was a big part of, 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 you know, getting on. And there was a different tempo back then as well. Obviously, now Connor is racing six days a week, maybe, through the summer, seven days a week, winter even now for lads, you know, there's four days a week. But when I first started riding and going out and socialising and whatnot, you'd have punched down school on a Monday or Tuesday, yeah. no race on Thursday. You could have a bit of fun as well as, <laughs> as do the day job, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where you're going with this one, <laughs> <laughs> it's just coming into my head. Do you remember uh, your great friend, your best one of your best pals, John Short, and he got sick? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, have a lunch in, in, lunch in Fallon's in, in Fallon's. Kilcullen. And I promise you, we'd sit there for, well, it'll go on for quite a few hours. I would. And we, 
actually cry laughing all day long because yourself and John Shaw got be good to him. You used to start telling the stories. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you start, <laughs> you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. All harmless, but like it was, it was just different times. Wasn't yeah, it? They yeah. Were great it would really were. And I remember a lot of my son Pat Smullen was was yeah. was there one day, like, and he was just sitting there with his eyes open. <laughs> <wrong>. What? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't have happened. Did you take you a little bit of time to get home from Punches? Ah, Saturday sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of Francis yeah. Floods and Homer Scott's sort. I'm sure really only about uh, 20 minutes. So Cars were lost lord at the time. <laughs> and you're a great pool player as well. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we had to get a few quid somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just changed so much, hasn't it? Ah, it, it has, sure. Everything, you know. Um, like all those stops on the way from Thurlis, like there was, you know, uh, the pubs, the Morrissey's Abbey Leaks, you know, those great pubs mm. to stop on the way home type of thing. They're all gone, like, you know. Um, look, I suppose things have moved on and motorways ways and a lot of things have, have, have changed but uh, there was it was great and you met a lot of people there too you know over there's the manor in and Nace, you know you met plenty of people there mm. I remember meeting um ferdy murphy one night years ago and he brought over one of jeff hubbard's horses and peter scudamore was to ride him and he'd gotten a fall that day in 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 England somewhere and rang Ferdy said I can't ride I think it was Cuddy Dale um, mm. yeah and uh, I happened to be standing there Ferdy turned around to me and says do you ride in the Leopard Sound Chase tomorrow I said no this is right Cuddy Dale do you know those yeah that doesn't happen anymore mm. like it's you know for Jeff Hobart yeah and yeah. That, is that how the association yeah, became yeah, Jeff yeah, Hobart because yeah. you were based in I went England, over yeah. a bit then uh, after that yeah for for you know over and back up a bit but I stayed over it for a while and uh yeah, again, great experience you at the time. You also took the job with uh, Kim Bailey just on that team, didn't you? After, after I did after the goal, after yeah. Imperial Call, um, Norman went their separate ways, and uh, Kieran O'Toole actually was my age at the time, and he rang Kim, and he just said to him, "Look, he said, would you be interested in Connor coming over, mm. not full time, but you know." And I said, yeah, absolutely. So mm. he said he would. So we met and uh, had a great season. I think it thirty winners in in England and. 60 or 65 here going over and back and again unbelievable experience met a lot of people and um, you know to ride all the tracks in England and see how it was done differently was brilliant a great yeah. opportunity to ride for such a trainer as Kim Bailey because he was at the height of his uh, powers at the absolutely. time absolutely yeah to be in Lambourne with, with, with as you say a good trainer like 60 or 70 horses and um, again just to see how everything was done differently and brilliant yeah fantastic training was it always the plan to go training no, it, it, it wasn't. Uh, I didn't know what I was, was really planning on doing, but uh, I, I actually, I, I'd say I was, I was 100% right when I saw how hard it was when I, when I was riding. I didn't, I didn't heed it, but uh, I, I just when it came to the end of it, then um, Michael O'Leary had said to me, look, he said, if you're going training, we'll support you and whatever. And I kind of thought about it then. I said, Jesus, it's hard to turn that down type of thing. So that's what got me into it, unfortunately. Do you enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <no way. laughs> I don't want to take that. Answer that Listen, I love it. Uh, I love the day-to-day -day training. I love um, the likes of those winners the other day. That's all brilliant. But the 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 the, the workings of the whole thing, especially now, it's changed so much. The cost of everything, staff. Uh, it's gone. It's, it's, it's a different game. It's 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 very very hard and very hard for everybody. Like you know, but it's a uh, it's a change game now, and it's you know it's it's very tough. You've trained plenty of winners, both on the over jumps, obviously on the flat. What? Where can you see it going? Or you know what? You know you're always striving to try and improve. Yeah. Um, look, it's 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 probably. Like when you started first, it was probably 15 years ago, you know, you had aspirations of, you know, one of 50 winners this year and that sort of thing. Um, and the game just changed. And, uh, you know, you, it's not William Mullins' fault, it's not Gordon Eddie's fault, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way things changed. Like there used to be a top, middle, and a bottom, and there's actually kind of no middle in it anymore. It's the few top and, you know, the bottom. And again, that's, you know, it's a a hard world but you get out and you do it yourself there's nobody to blame for it um, but to get any sort of decent horse now it's it's you know it's you need it's, it's costs a lot like you know years ago you bought a horse at, at, at any of the, the unbroken sales and you know you, you're in with a fair mm -hmm. fight but those horses are just gone 
crazy and sold the point to point winners. It's, it's very hard to get in at that that level, you know. And that's Just where getting the raw the material is, is quite different. Exactly, now, yeah. it is, yeah. you know. And even as I said, those young horses are, you know, the lads, the point to point lads are, are buying them, and they're to me they're they're. You know, they're they're a lot dearer than they should be type of yeah. thing. You know, yeah. years ago you you took a chance on a couple mm. of cheaper ones, but they're not even there now, really. You know, you have to be very very lucky. And if you need the Irish a shark, like to yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and if they are cheap, they're probably cheap for a reason. Ex- and you don't exactly, really want you don't. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a, like to, to to kind of talk an owner into getting one is kind of one thing, but then you kind of come home with a cheap one and he's looking at it going. Why is he cheap? As you yeah. said, there, there's reason, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult now to... As you mentioned, though, there's a couple of new initiatives coming in the programme which restrict the race and hopefully there's incentives there for people to uh, build up the stream through things like that coming hopefully, on stream. Hopefully, because, like, even to go and put a syndicate together, a lot of lads are going, well, sure, look, what's the point? You know, we're bumping into William Mullins, we're bumping, you know, whereas at least if there's a, a programme of those races there, at least I can say, well, look, lads, mm. you know, we've 25 races a year there mm. that are restricted to you know, as you say, 20 or 25, whatever the, the criteria may, may be, but at least you have a chance of saying, you know, this is 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 for us type of thing, this is our level mm-hmm. and we'll be able to compete here and, you know, I, I would hope for the good of racing, I think it needs to, something like that needs to happen and as I say, you hear of, oh, the small trainer, small. it's not about the small trainer, it's about the good of racing, that's, you know, the the competitiveness, the lads in the, in the bookies officers are, are can't back a horse, they're all odds on, like even look at Cheltenham next week, mm. Jeez, you never saw, her, you know, favourites, Two to one on, three to one on for 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 that sort of race, and like it's you know it's and a change. And, and you, you need to have the dream, don't you? Like you know that's the thing as well. Like that's you know, the thing. Like, like well, we're, all, we're all yeah. dreamers. Yeah, that's why, yeah, we're that's why exactly yeah. it's one below yeah. horses, yeah. and then secondly, we're all dreamers. Someday, hopefully, something yeah. you know, mm. and you never know where it comes from. It might be the dearest horse, or it might be the best looking horse, and that's what keeps the whole thing going. And there you go. Just going back to the shark, eight hundred quid here. He's won over seven hundred grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? They've had some fantastic days. That's a great story for us. Yeah. It is, and the racing needs that sort of story, but it just needs to happen probably a bit more often. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 we always seen in the past like Fergus Sutherland, a small car trainer, that kind of thing. But if you can bring in, keep bringing in incentives as well, get a syndicate in, you got to entertain them then as well, don't you? Absolutely, there's more losing days than winning days. So Definitely, got to be yeah. every, everything. It's a whole package nowadays for your it owners. Is, it is. A very good yeah. <laughs> And you have a great success with the syndicates. Yeah, yeah. Just with some days up here with the likes of John S yeah. and, and the lady singing at Barristown. And do you know, but that's what it's saying. And you need that th- these days is, is syndicates because, again, the cost of everything is, is so high. Y- you need to spread it out. Best horse you ever rode? Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, I suppose I, ha- I have to say a war of attrition. Really? Yeah. When he was yeah. at the... And I just had I just had such connection with him, and and, and uh, he was just I just you tr- I trust him with my life. He was I, I loved riding him. Mm. Amazing, you know. Oh, it was club. hard. It's hard, but. Yeah. How was the gold cup? cup. Uh, look, galloping the champ. If he if he turns up in his best form, I, I don't think he can be beat. But I do expect Martin Brass's horse to to give him a, a run for his money. Martin's horse is probably just a little bit more straightforward. Um, but I think the other horse just on his day is is is. His, his class horse. You're in the car every morning. You'd see Martin's horse in action. <clears throat> yeah, Martin uh, again. Bit like the the, the older Target the mouse of trainers. Exactly. He has him ready for the day, and he's no better man. He's had Cheltenham success, and uh, you know he, he he won't be far away. Connor, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming and joining us. And it's been a great chat. And no doubt everybody at home watching him would have really enjoyed it tonight. Uh, you have a few nice horses to look forward to coming up? Yeah, yeah, hopefully now. Um, there's a nice horse there uh, on the steel. Um, mm. He might run next Saturday in, again in one of those list, uh, restricted races, so I look forward to him. What was the last round? Uh, I think uh, Escaline is very interesting. The money's arrived for her for Johnny Murta on her seasonal debut. She'll do me. OK, well, our correspondent will be probably the last to go in. Connor, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks a million, Thanks, so much, Thanks Fran. Thanks a million. Super. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.